can Benjamin Netanyahu bring back Israeli hostages? The answer to that question has looked absolutely uncertain ever since the Israel-Hamas war started. And now Israel is offering cash rewards to try and get the hostages back. You heard that right. Netanyahu has said that Israel is offering a reward of $5 million to anybody who brings out a hostage held in Gaza. But will the strategy work? And why now? Why has Netanyahu now made this offer? Let's get to the details and what is known at this point. According to Netanyahu's office, Netanyahu has said that anybody who brings out a hostage will find with us a secure way for them and their family to leave Gaza, quote unquote. Further saying that we will also give them a reward of $5 million for each hostage, quote unquote. Not just that, Netanyahu said anyone who dares to do harm to our hostages is considered dead. We will pursue you and we will catch up with you. Underlining that one of uh, Israel's war aims remain that Hamas does not rule in Gaza. And also saying that we are also making efforts to locate the hostages and bring them home. We will not give up. We will continue until we have found them all alive or dead, quote unquote. Remember, anger has been boiling over on the ground in Israel, demanding Netanyahu bring back the hostages. He has been accused of, in a way, abandoning hostages just to cling on to power. The pressure has only been piling up. Netanyahu has been feeling the heat. And now comes this cash reward offer at a time when the U.S. is hoping to wind down the war. In fact, U.S. envoy Amos Hochstein said he will travel to Israel to try to secure a ceasefire, ending the war with Lebanon's Hezbollah group after declaring additional progress in talks in Beirut. Just to give you some context here, Hochstein arrived a day earlier in Beirut and as of now he sounds optimistic, or at least that is what is being portrayed. He said he saw a real opportunity to end the conflict after the Lebanese government and Hezbollah agreed to a U.S. ceasefire proposal, although with some comments. He is on a mission. After his second meeting with the parliament speaker, Nabi Berry, endorsed by the Iran-backed Hezbollah to negotiate, Hodgson said that there was additional progress. So his aim is to, quote-unquote, try to bring this to a close if we can. Now, this comes as West Asia remains on the boil and one step away from a catastrophe. In Lebanon, three Lebanese troops were killed in an Israeli airstrike on an army base in the southern town of Sarafant, while at least 17 civilians were reportedly injured, according to the country's military and Ministry of Public Health. Smoke rose from the rubble in Lebanon's Nabateye as emergency crews cleared the debris from heavily damaged buildings after blasts hit the town. Meanwhile, four United Nations peacekeepers were wounded in southern Lebanon on Tuesday when a rocket struck a base, while another peacekeeping base was damaged by rocket fire and a patrol was shot at. In a statement, the peacekeeping mission, known as UNIFIL, said a rocket likely fired by non-state actors within Lebanon struck the base of Khana's mission in the east of Ramya village, injuring four peacekeepers, three of whom required hospitalization. Lebanon's army said one soldier was killed on Wednesday in an Israeli attack on a military vehicle after previously reporting two personnel wounded in the incident in South Lebanon. Hezbollah said it fired guided missiles Tuesday night at Israeli forces as they attempt to evacuate wounded soldiers in southern Lebanon. What lies ahead for West Asia is hard to tell, but every move, every step matters. Can the U.S. really make a difference remains to be seen. At this point, things could turn either way with implications for the entire region and beyond. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.